sign we like each other, amen. Good sign we love each other, amen. So I told Liberty Hill, so that's a, strong, uh, a sign of a good, strong, healthy church. Everybody's fellowshipping before and everybody's fellowshipping after, and there's nothing wrong with that for sure. I like it. Um, but welcome to Grassy Creek this evening. I'm tickled to be here. and uh, So just want to say before we start this evening, um, and take up any prayer requests that uh, anybody may have. Robert Schlegel's procedure tomorrow, <clears throat> 3 30. Let's do remember him. Anybody else? I want to mention just a few. I got a text just a little while ago. Uh, uh, remember Angie Madigan? Um, this is Sandy's brother in law's sister, and uh, apparently having some. Some uh, real bad health issues, and uh, in the hospital, and Sandy asked that we pray for her and and her family. So Angie Madigan, um, do want to ask that y'all pray for uh, Herbert Holman. I got the the word just a little while ago that he got a bad report, and so if y'all would remember him, that's my uncle. My dad was very concerned. Um, Tracy's mom will be having some uh, procedures done on Monday, right? And so we need to be praying for her, if y'all would. Uh, Tracy's sister is having a uh, having her surgery on October the 19th. If y'all don't mind to be praying for her. I want to ask that we pray for Pastor Nathan uh, while he's on his trip. And uh, just pray for safe travel and that he gets rested and uh, rejuvenated and, and all that good stuff. Anybody else? Let's pray this evening, and uh, and then we'll dive right into the Word and, and see what the Lord says to us tonight. Father, we just uh, want to thank you for the wonderful day you've given us. God, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege, honor, and the opportunity to be here in your house this evening. God, I'm thankful, Lord, for uh, the fact that you always hear our prayers. God, I'm thankful for this wonderful church congregation. Lord, as we gather together and we pray, Lord, I know that you hear our voice, Lord. And we do, God, want to pray in unity tonight. Lord, we want to pray, God, for each and every name mentioned here. Lord, we pray, God, for Angie Madigan, Lord, in that family, in that situation. God, we pray, Lord, that you'd move, that you'd touch, Lord, that you'd help and heal. God, we do pray, Lord, that you'd be ever so present with them during these uh, difficult times. God, we pray, Lord, for Herbert Holman. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch him and bless him. Lord, we pray, God, for Judy Wolke, Lord, that she her procedures would go okay. Lord, we pray, God, for Heather, Lord, that she has surgery done as well. Lord, we want to pray, God, for Robert Slagle. Lord, we pray, God, that as he has his procedure done tomorrow at 3.30, God, that you would just go ahead and be preparing the doctors and the nurses and everybody involved, Lord, and that it go perfectly according to thy plan. Father, we just pray, Lord, for our church tonight. God, we pray, Lord, that you'd be with us all. Lord, whether we're here in body, Lord, or whether we're just part of the church, and Lord, I pray for each and every one of the wonderful people at Grassy Creek. Lord, I pray, God, your blessings upon them. Lord, I pray, God, your presence with them. Father, and I pray, Lord, that you'd touch and bless each one. Lord, we pray, God, for our pastors. We pray for Pastor Nathan as he is on his trip. Lord, that he'd get rested. Lord, that he'd have a good time. Lord, and we pray, God, that you'd bless him, grant him safe travel back home. Lord, we pray, God, for Pastor Gene as he brings forth the word of truth to our youth. Lord, we pray, God, for him. We pray, God, that you bless him and be with him. Help him to continue to minister to these young folks. And, Lord, we just pray, God, that your presence will be ever so present with him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. And, God, we do want to specifically lift up our nation to you tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch and help and heal this nation. Lord, we are a nation that's divided. Lord, we are a nation that's broken. Lord, we are a nation, God, that has gotten away from your word and God I pray Lord for the leaders of this nation God those that are in office Lord we pray for them every one our president our vice president the congress the senate Lord we pray God for the supreme court Lord we pray God for all the judges making decisions our governors mayors Lord every single one Lord that's over anything has any authority God we pray for them Lord we want to live a life of godliness and peace Lord we pray God for our leaders Lord to turn back to you Father we pray Lord for all of this, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. I don't want us to uh, forget as Christians, you know, that those events like Saturday are absolutely wonderful, and I enjoy it, I love it, and it's great to be called into unity to pray together, to march in prayer, 
But let us not forget that we're to pray every day. Pray without ceasing. Pray for our nation uh, diligently. Pray for those that are in, in charge. Uh, Second Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2 tells us, you know, it's, it's what God wants. It's acceptable in his sight. And we certainly need to make sure that we're doing that. Amen. I pray for a great revival for the church within this nation. And I pray for a great awakening for those that are lost. I would love to see just a true movement of the Spirit of God and a lot of people get saved. Amen. That would be uh, just a blessing. If you have your Bible tonight, I invite you to turn with me to Psalm 103. Psalm 103 tonight. Just going to kind of take my time and walk through a few verses of this psalm. It is a beautiful, beautiful psalm. The thought of my heart tonight is praise and worship. Praise and worship. And I'll explain some of what the message will be about as we read and, uh, and ask God's blessings upon his word. Uh, we'll dive into it. Amen. If when you find your place, just say amen. All right, Psalm 103, we'll begin reading in verse 1, and we'll read down through verse 5. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's pray one more time. Father, we thank you once more, God, for the reading and the hearing of your word. God, and we pray, Lord, that you would bless it. Lord, that you would speak through me tonight. God, I pray, Lord, hide me behind thy word. Help me to say and do only what you'd have me to say and do. God, and I pray, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us as a congregation to find application for what you'd say to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thought of my heart tonight is praise and worship. I heard a uh, wonderful definition uh, just, I think it was about two weeks ago, of worship. And the preacher said that true worship happens when our mind's attention and our heart's affection is set upon God. I began thinking about that and how true that is, that that's what it takes to worship. Because Jesus told us that they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. And so our mind's attention has to be set upon God to be worshiping. Our heart's affection needs to be set upon God for worshiping. I want you to remember that as we go through these verses of Scripture. Because what this passage is, is uh, superscription says a psalm of David. But as you study through it and you look through it, it is a praise to God. In fact, the first five verses that I read in your hearing tonight is David's praise unto God for what God has done for him and for who God is. Amen. Who God is and what he's done. Remember that. Verses 6 through 19 is a praise of God for what God has done universally. So what has God done for all of his people and all the people? And then as you read on down through after verse 19, what that is is a call to praise and worship. As David is literally calling everyone that can to praise and worship the Lord Almighty. It is a psalm that is full of praise and full of worship. I love that. I think that that is one of the things that we are lacking so much in the day and hour that we're living in. I think that... We are being at times so distracted, and I speak when I say we as myself primarily, being so distracted from praise and worship. So whenever I think about this passage of scripture in this psalm, and the superscription says a psalm of David, the first point that I want to make tonight is that difficulties and hardships can drive us away from praise and worship if we're not careful. That's one of the first things that I want us to be aware of tonight when it comes down to praise and worship. See, I began when I studied this passage of Scripture just thinking about who wrote it being David. And I thought about all the difficulties and the hardships and the challenges that King David faced. David did absolutely nothing wrong to King Saul. Only thing David tried to do was help him and play so that Saul's uh, spirit would be okay. The only thing David do was take Saul's place and where Saul should have been out fighting Goliath David said I'll go 
I'll go and fight. Yet Saul determined himself to kill David. He chased David all the way out of the kingdom. He wanted to kill him. He tried to run David through with a spear on multiple occasions. Could you imagine what a distraction and difficulty that would be when your best friend is Jonathan? And not only that, Jonathan's dad, your best friend, he wants to kill you? He's the king. The king literally has a hit out on your head. I mean, I can't think of how challenging that would have been for David to be running in the wilderness away from the king who was trying to kill him. Not only Saul, but I thought about Absalom his own flesh and blood, his son that raised up against him in a revolt to try to take over the kingdom. Literally, David left the throne. Literally, to keep from fighting his own son who was raised up in in a revolt against him, he left. He didn't want to fight his own son. He didn't want to see his own son killed. And so he left. Could you imagine how difficult that would be? I thought about how David lost children. You know, whenever he had uh, the child with Bathsheba, it wasn't long after the birth that that child died and passed away. How difficult that must have been for David. All of these difficulties can certainly lead us away from praise and worship if we're not aware that that's what can take place. That's why I started with the definition of worship, which is we praise God for who he is and what he's done. We need to always ensure that we are praising God. I'm going to turn back and read a passage of Scripture. You can write it down. You don't have to turn there. But I thought about David's difficulties and how that never stopped him from praising God. Whenever he was knew that the child was sick in Bathsheba's womb, whenever he knew that the child was possibly going to die, David fasted and he prayed. And he sought God's face and he asked God, save this child. God, help this child. God, heal this child. He didn't want to see his own child pass away. But yet after that passing, here's what David done. In Psalm tw- uh, or in 2 Samuel 12, verse 20, the Bible says, Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel And came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. And worshipped. Then he came to his own house. And when he required, they set bread before him. And he did eat. I can't imagine how difficult that must have been for David to face. I mean, I can't imagine the feelings that came to David's heart. Knowing that he lost his child. I know just losing the loved ones that I've lost... What emotions run over you? And yet David got up and he worshipped God. He knew that that was his God and that he needed God. If we're not careful, all the difficulties that we face will drive us away from worship. I'm turning over to 2 Samuel chapter 22. And I'm going to read to you a few verses out of that chapter just to help us to understand tonight that no matter what difficulty David faced, he still praised and he still worshipped God. Why? Because we worship God for who he is, not just what he's done. The first few verses of 2 Samuel chapter 22, after King Saul had chased him, after King Saul had tried to kill him, and finally David had deliverance from King Saul, here's what the Bible says. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. And the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord. And listen to this who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. David said, no matter what I face, no matter what enemy has come up against me, God is worthy to be praised. God delivered him from the hand of every one of his enemies. And he gave credit to God 
wholeheartedly. He said God is worthy to be praised. He continuously gives the glory and the praise and the honor to God no matter what difficulties he faced. I say all that tonight to remind us that and really as I study this to remind myself that no matter what difficulties we face, because church, I hear it all the time. I've heard so much about the difficulties we've faced in this year of 2020. And it's true, we faced a lot of difficulties. We faced a lot of hardships. As a nation, we're facing division. As a nation, we're facing sickness and disease. As a nation, we're facing so many different things that, that is weighing down on this nation and creating such division. And here's what I believe. I believe the enemy is at work to distract us from what we're supposed to be doing which is praising and worshiping and honoring God Almighty for who He is not just what He's done. I think it's so important for us to remember that church that we are to praise Him even through the difficult times even if it's not just as a nation I know that each and every one here have probably faced your own challenges this year you've probably faced your own hardships this year within your family or within your life and I want to encourage you don't ever lose sight that we're still to praise and worship God even when things are not going good why? because we're to praise God for who He is and not just what He's done Amen we need to remember that he's worthy of our praise. That's what David says in 2 Samuel. He's worthy to be praised. Those difficulties can certainly distract us and pull us away from any praise and worship. I began thinking about just coming in here on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening or a Wednesday night and how we can be so weighed down and so burdened with all the difficulties that we face that our hands and our mouth and, and everything we have may be singing the motions and may be going through the praise songs but our hearts and our minds are a million miles away from what those words truly mean. I told the young men that I met with last night I'm not sure if that's true worship. I'm not sure if that's true praise. Whenever our heart is not in it and our mind is not in it, is it praise and worship to God who we must worship in spirit and in truth? Amen. We need to try to set our mind upon those things. For me, there are so many distractions these days that can pull us away from God that can pull us away from seeking His face, that can pull us away from praise and worship. I'll tell you one for me personally. I began thinking about social media and how it draws and pulls. And if you don't think that it is a big distraction, I'm telling you, for me personally, it may not be for you. But there's times where I would be reading my Bible or could have been praying or could have been seeking God's face, but yet I would be seeing the next update or trying to find what's going on next out there in the world. And it's a draw and it's a pull. I know for these young folks, these young men that I meet up with, it's a constant draw and a constant pull and a distraction that can distract you from God. But God is worthy of all of our minds' attention and our hearts' affection toward Him. Sometimes we come in here and our minds and our hearts are so full of everything else. Amen that we can't truly worship or praise God like He deserves to be praised and to be worshipped. So be aware tonight that difficulties can draw you away from praising and worshiping God, but we can't let them do that. I say take David's example. And here in this psalm, everything that I've studied, every commentary that I've read seems to think this was a psalm written by David in some of his latter years after he had been through so many difficulties, after he had been through so many hardships, after his family had fell apart in so many different ways, and what do we find him here doing? We find him here praising God. <laughs> through it all, he praises God. Through everything that he faced, he still praises God. So number one is be aware of those difficulties and distractions that will pull you away from praising God. Praise him for who he is not just what he's done. Number two, set your heart on God. Set your mind on him. Verse one says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You know what David's doing in verse one? 
He's literally telling himself. He's literally talking to himself and encouraging himself. Praise God. He's literally telling himself, bless the Lord. Oh, that's important. Sometimes it takes us doing that, setting our heart's attention and our mind's affection towards God, getting away from all the things that distract us and pull at us and, and just drag us down and literally telling ourselves, encouraging ourselves, bless the Lord and praise His holy name. Worship Him. That's what He deserves and that's what He's worthy of. What does that take at times? When those difficulties occur, when those challenges come up in life, when those hardships are beating you down, it takes you literally setting your heart's affection and your mind's attention towards God. Sometimes this may take us literally talking to ourselves as David is pinning down here. He's telling his own soul and who he is. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Sometimes we got to encourage ourselves. The Bible tells us David encouraged himself in the Lord. I thought about uh, Proverbs 4, 23. tells us to guard our heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Keep your heart, the Bible tells us. That's because the heart can lead us so far astray. The heart is deceitfully wicked above all else, and who can know it? And so many people let their heart lead them today. So many people let their heart drag them down this path or down this path. And I've said it before and I'll say it again tonight. So many people use the heart wants what the heart wants to lead them to a path of sin, to justify sin in their life. The Bible tells us guard your heart, keep your heart. I think we've got to guide our heart towards Jesus. Amen. We need to move our heart and set our heart's affection on Christ. Amen. Get it away from the things of the world. Sometimes that takes shutting everything else out. I've thought about numerous times in the New Testament how Paul tells us, think upon these things. Set your mind. Philippians chapter 4, think on whatsoever is lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise. Think on these things. That's what David is doing here. He's literally setting, or I guess you could say resetting or refocusing his attention. I don't think it's any, I don't think it's any coincidence that this psalm and, and is penned in direct contrast in comparing it to Psalm 102. I'm going to flip back there and read just a few verses of Psalm 102 because here's what takes place there. In the superscription of Psalm 102, it says, It's a prayer of the afflicted when he is overwhelmed and poureth out his complaint before the Lord. And here's what Psalm 102 says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. And listen at how the psalmist feels in Psalm 102. Because I believe it's a, it's a good indication of how we feel when those difficulties and troubles pull us down. He says, for my days are consumed like smoke. He says, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of, my vo of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. Psalm of the afflicted and the overwhelmed. But yet David, directly after this, and I don't know if David pinned down Psalm 102, the Bible don't tell us, but directly after Psalm 102, where this psalmist is overwhelmed and going through all of this difficulty and hardship and he's afflicted, then we find the psalmist saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul. <laughs> that word bless, it literally means... To kneel down and praise. To kneel before God and praise. Why do I tell you all that tonight? Here's what I want you to know. Even in the midst of difficulties, hardships, challenges, there is no better place than to be than to kneel before the Lord and begin to praise Him. When we kneel before Him, when we kneel before God and we start praising Him for who He is, it will completely change your perspective on what's going on. It'll help you to see God rather than your problems. If you're like me tonight, 
and problems and challenges arrive in your, arise in your life, that's all I can focus on. I've got to get past this challenge. I've got to do something about this difficulty. I've got to fix this. And I can get so driven to fix this and to fix that. And I can't do anything until after I get past it. The problem is sometimes I can't handle it in my own strength and in my own abilities. Whereas if I would step back and get on my knees before God and say, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. I know you have all power. You have all might. You have all dominion. And I need your help. In this situation, when we get alone with him and we kneel down, even in the difficulties and the hardships, and we praise him for who he is, what we're doing is changing our perspective. We're no longer focused on how big the problem is, but we're looking at how big our God is. Amen? That's what happens when we kneel before him and bless him. That's what David was saying to himself. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Kneel down and praise Him. My God, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my refuge, my strong tower. That word Lord that you find there, the name of the Lord in that verse, verse 1, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Yahweh, Jehovah. The holy name of God that you find that God gives to Moses in Exodus whenever he sent him. Moses was on holy ground and God says, I am who I am. Therefore, tell them, I am sent you. (laughs) That does something for me, church. Whenever I kneel before Almighty God and I begin to praise the great I am, the one who always has been, the one who is, and the one who always will be, it completely changes my perspective on things. It helps me to remember that he's already been where I'm going. He already knows how it's going to turn out. He is with me right now where I'm at. And he has been before me and I've seen his blessings many times. It completely changes my perspective. And that's what David was saying. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Sometimes it does us some good to focus on His holiness. Amen. Bless His holy name. Sometimes we forget just how holy the Lord is. That He is not of this world. When we invite Him into our situations, we're not just inviting anybody to help us. But we're inviting the thrice holy God where even the angels in Revelation declare around His throne, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. That's why David says, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to worship God for who he is. Bless his holy name. When we do that, just as David did, and we begin setting our focus and our perspective on God rather than our difficulties, it's no difficulty understanding why David says, with everything within me, praise God. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. He literally says, Praise God from way down deep in here. To my very soul, I want to praise God. Some people believe that they are a living body with a soul. Truth of the matter is, we're a living soul with a body. Amen. Our soul is eternal, not our body. This body will perish. This body will go in the grave. This body is corruptible. We'll receive a new body one day when we get to heaven. (laughs) That's why really, when we come in here, a thousand miles away from God in our heart and our mind and we do things with our body and we sing with our body but our heart's not in it and our mind's not in it there's no worship in that there's no worship there we may be having an emotional movement we may like the the sound of the music or whatever it may be but is that true worship if it's just an emotional experience remember the definition of worship is when our heart's affection and our mind's attention is set upon God. But the third point that I want to make to you tonight is praise Him with all that you have. (laughs) That's what David said. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. If it wasn't enough to simply say, bless the Lord, O my soul, my very being, who I am, way down deep in here, he says, and all that is within me, everything that I have, I want it to praise the Lord. 
He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be blessed. He's worthy to kneel before and worship in spirit and in truth. He's worthy of all of our love and our adoration. He is God. Amen. And I think that we need to remember that in the day and the hour we're living in. Don't let those distractions pull at you. I would love to have seen how David was when he penned this song. I mean, I can just picture him in true spirit and true worship and love and adoration for the Lord. We don't see that very often, just to be honest, in the day and hour we live in. All of us come in so distracted by everything else. I think I've said this before. I know a man who told me one time, he said, before I go into church, I always try to spend a few minutes in the truck and pray. And he says, I pray, God, please, Remove any distractions from my heart. Remove any, any burdens from my mind. And when I go into the church, help me to remember why I'm there. And help me to praise and worship in spirit and in truth. <laughs> I thought about that ever since he mentioned that to me. How I should do that. And not come running in at the very last minute as I do so often. Look, I'm fussing at myself tonight. <laughs> Because I sometimes come into this place so many times not ready to worship, not prepared for worship. But David is so prepared, he says it twice. Look in verse 1, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Then he goes on in verse 2 and he repeats that phrase. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I believe why he repeats that phrase is twofold. Sometimes we are so far away from worship and praise and so unprepared to truly worship and praise God that we need to remind ourselves twice. Amen. Sometimes we need to tell ourselves twice. Set your heart's affection on God. Set your mind's attention on who He is and cast away every other burden and just begin focusing and put your perspective on God. <laughs> I believe that David says it twice because he needed to prepare himself twice. But two, remember what I told you about worship, the definition, and, and, and how that we need to set our mind's attention and our heart's affection on God. The second part I want to tell you tonight about worship is what I've already mentioned once. Not only do we praise God for who He is, but number two, we praise God for what He's done. Amen. So the first verse, what you find is David is praising God for who He is. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. That's who God is. The Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, mighty God, the great I am, his holy name. The second verse, what does he say after that phrase? Bless the Lord, O my soul. Then he says, and forget not all of his benefits. What is all of his benefits? It's what he does for you and for me. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing for us to remember. We worship God for who he is first. He's worthy. That way when difficulties arise, when troubles come up, when hard times are there, he's still worthy. It does not change him. He is unchanging. He will be the same God as he was yesterday, as he will be forevermore. With him there is no variableness, neither shadow nor turning. He is the same God that's worthy to be praised and worshipped. Then we praise him and we worship him for what he's done. And that's what you find in verse 2. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. I thought about that forget not and how oftentimes I'm very forgetful about what God has already done for me. Amen. Sometimes God blesses me. He helps me. He'll do something mighty in my life, in my work, whatever it may be, in my family, and I forget to bless him for it. I forget to praise him for it. What do I do when that happens? Oftentimes I take the credit for myself or some other circumstance. Does God not work everything together for the good for those that love him? Is it not God who, who orchestrates and pulls the strings behind everything? I believe he's worthy to be praised over every single thing that happens in your life and in my life. He's worthy to be praised for it all. And sometimes I forget to step back and just simply say, thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done in my life. David reminds himself, forget not all of his benefits. 
Don't be forgetful about what God has done for you. You know what happens when we begin forgetting about what God has done in our life? When the next problem comes up, we start focusing on the problem rather than on God. We go back right to the same situation and scenario we went through before. Oh, I've got this problem. I don't know what to do. Can we hang our head? And we're walking. And we don't know what to do. <laughs> we forget what God has already done in our lives. I thought if every single one of us here tonight simply had a diary or a journal of all the blessings that God has poured out on you and on me, what a time of testimony we could have tonight. Amen. What a time we could raise our hand and just praise God and just say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, for what He's done. I've encouraged believers before. Start keeping a journal. Pin down what God has done for you. Pin down the blessings. I encourage believers pin down some prayers from time to time that you can go back to them whenever you're in difficult times and pray that same prayer. It's not repetitive, but it's just good to go back and read what you've been through. To go back and read where God brought you from. To go back and remember, forget not, put yourself in remembrance of all of God's benefits. That word benefits means how he's treated you or his actions towards you. Oh, I'm telling you, God has been so good to you and to me. We don't ever need to forget how God has been so good in our lives. And I say let that be one of the things that drives us to praise, not the primary thing. The primary thing needs to be He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise, no matter what situation we're in. But number two, remember what he's done for you. And I tell you, I, I, I don't know how long these awakened nights are going to happen for Pastor Nathan, but if we get the chance, I want to go on through this song because David mentions in these next verses some wonderful things that God has done in your life and in my life if you're a believer. Amen? But I want to end there tonight and just remind us don't let the distractions, don't let the difficulties, don't let the hardships drive you away from praising and worshiping God for He is worthy. Praise Him for who He is. And then number two, begin thinking about what He's done in your life. And see tonight, if you don't just bless the Lord, oh my soul, before you lie down tonight and go to bed. Pin a few of them down. Share a few of them with your family. Talk about what all God has done for you. I'm telling you, it'll completely change your attitude. It'll completely change your perspective. It'll bring a joy to your heart to think about all that God has done in your life. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I would love to hear some testimony. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Anybody else? Wonderful time. Nobody? All right. What a blessing. That's a great story. I appreciate you sharing. That's a blessing. Well, let's pray tonight and we'll close in prayer and we'll just thank God tonight for all of his wonderful benefits and for who he is. He's able, ain't he? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the wonderful day you've given us. God, we want to thank you, Lord, that through trying times, hard times, difficult times, Lord, you're still with us. God, that you are in control, Lord, and you are worthy to be praised. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you've done in the church family. Lord, I'm thankful for this testimony tonight, God, and how you've moved and touched in that situation. Lord, I know, God, that we've prayed, and Lord, you've heard our prayer. 
God, and I'm ever so thankful, Lord, for that. Father, we just thank you and we praise you tonight, God, for doing so wonderful things. God, we pray, Lord, lead God and direct us as we go out of this place. Lord, we ask and pray, God, that you just continue to bless us, Lord, and help us to always remember to bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I appreciate